as we are working with energy, certain kinds are going to be significantly more useful than others in terms of being able to get a system to do something uh, that might be useful or helpful to us. So the kinds of energy that are generally useful are kinetic energy, uh, because if you have something that is moving, uh, that in and of itself might be useful. Otherwise, you could have a moving object uh, traveling through a system, and you could have it hit something uh, and make that move uh, something else. So if we have kinetic energy in water, for example, we can use that moving water to spin a water wheel uh, and generate uh, electricity, and that, 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 that is useful. Potential energy is also extremely useful because it is both a way to store energy. If you don't want your objects to be moving, you can convert your kinetic energy into potential energy and store it, but you can get it back out later. And so potential energy uh, is really valuable. Uh, however, there are other kinds of energy that are significantly less helpful and useful, uh, such as heat. Um, heat, if your goal is to warm something up, heat obviously has value. But otherwise, heat energy is very, very, very difficult to convert back into any other kind of energy. In fact, you can never convert all of your heat energy back into another kind of energy. And so if any of our energy in a, in a mechanical system gets converted into heat, it basically stops being useful to us at that point if our goal was to do anything other than warm something up. And so we have a name uh, for all of the useful kinds of energy. Uh, we call it mechanical energy. We'll abbreviate that as E, uh, subscript mech, so mechanical energy. The total of all useful forms of energy in a system. And what we mean by useful is specifically kinetic energy and potential energy. But not less useful forms. Such as heat. Uh, there are other less kinds, less useful kinds of energy as well. Sound energy, if two objects collide and make a uh, sound, uh, generally the amount of energy that that takes is so small it's just a rounding error and we sort of ignore it. But if you have something continuously vibrating and generating a tremendous amount of sound, uh, that like heat, once it becomes sound energy, it's hard to actually convert it back into anything useful. Uh, light energy uh, is another one. Uh, you know, if something is uh, giving off a bunch of, of light, uh, it's hard to convert that light energy uh, easily back into something useful. Uh, but our kinetic and our potential energies are easy to work with. And for the most part in our problem solving, heat is really going to, it's pretty much going to be kinetic energy, potential energy, and heat are going to be the ones that you see uh, in your problem solving uh, in this course in freshman physics. Or even if you uh, become like a mechanical engineer and 99% like of what you're concerned about is going to be these three forms of energy. Um, so I can write this as an equation. Uh, the mechanical energy is equal to uh, the kinetic energy uh, plus uh, the potential energy uh, in a system. Cool. So if we have a system and the only forces inside that system are conservative, that means that within the system we could have our conservative force adding or removing kinetic energy. But if it removes kinetic energy, it's going to add potential energy. If it adds potential energy, it's going to remove kinetic energy. I'm sorry, if it adds kinetic energy, it's going to remove potential energy. Um, and so they're, they're just going back and forth. 
And if that force is inside the system, if that conservative force is inside the system, uh, then we just go from having kinetic energy inside the system to having potential energy inside the system to kinetic energy inside the system. And so that means that the total amount of energy in the system has to be constant. Uh, and if all the forces are conservative, the mechanical energy has to be constant. So if there are no external forces doing work on a system, and all of the internal forces are conservative, Uh, then the total mechanical energy of the system has to be conserved. Can't be any external forces doing work on the system because that would just add, in, add or remove energy in general to the system. Uh, if there's no external forces, then you at least know the law of conservation of energy says the total energy in the system is going to be constant. Uh, but if all the forces are conservative, you're never going to be converting any of that energy into heat. And so anything that starts as mechanical energy is going to stay as mechanical energy if all the forces are conservative. Uh, and so you could write that as uh, the initial mechanical energy is equal to the final mechanical energy. Uh, or the initial kinetic energy uh, plus the initial potential energy uh, is equal to the total of the final kinetic energy plus the final potential energy. Um, this equation requires this stuff to be true. Uh, so maybe next to it we can just like the short version uh, no external force, no non-conservative forces. I apologize if that is too small to read. So two things that are true to do is no external forces, or at least no external forces doing work. I guess if you have an external force that is... Uh, perpendicular to the displacement of the system and, and isn't actually changing the energy, that's, that's fine. But there can't be any external forces doing work, and there can't be any non-conservative forces. Uh, this will be true. Um, if, on the other hand, uh, there was an external force uh, doing work on the system, or actually, no, let's maybe deal with that second. Uh, so what if there were uh, some non-conservative forces? Uh... If there are, non-conservative forces in the system, that means that we're going to start with a certain amount of mechanical energy in the system. Uh, any conservative forces in the system are going to change that mechanical energy uh, between different amounts of kinetic and potential, but it stays the same. But the non-conservative forces are going to convert some of our mechanical energy into heat. Uh, and so in that case, we would say that the initial mechanical energy uh, is going to, uh, by the end, be divided between however much is left is mechanical energy and heat. Uh, heat has different symbols. Uh, sometimes it's Q. Sometimes you might call it E sub heat. Um, we don't really do a lot of math with it. It's usually just sort of the thing that uh, is the reason your energies don't line up. And so we'll just write heat because it makes it easiest to read. Uh, so that would mean that if we wrote this out completely, since mechanical energy is the <coughs> total of your kinetic and potential energy, 
uh, Ki plus Ui is equal to Kf plus Uf plus the heat. And again, this equation only applies uh, to this condition. Um, and then the other thing we said uh, originally to get our, our conservation of mechanical energy equation, uh, we said there couldn't be any external forces doing work. Uh, and so let's think about what would happen if there are external forces doing work. Uh, so if there are any external forces doing work on the system, Uh, that means that uh, the uh, initial energy of the system, uh, whether it's, you know, mechanical energy, kinetic and potential, or maybe it includes some heat and whatever, uh, is uh, not going to be equal to the final energy of the system uh, because we're going to do some work on it, and so we have to add the amount of work done. If it's positive work, uh, we're going to increase the energy of the system. If work is negative, when we add a negative, we're going to decrease the energy. We'll end up with less energy in the system. So... Uh, and this shouldn't be surprising because if we rearrange this equation, we get work is the final minus the initial energy of the system, or work is change in energy, which was our fundamental definition of work. Uh, and so in that case, uh, we would get uh, if the initial uh, energy of the system is mechanical energy, uh, we would have your initial kinetic and your initial potential energies. Uh, and then plus any work done is going to tell you what the total energy of the system is at the end. So we start with this much energy, add or remove this much energy. That'll give us the energy at the end, uh, which is going to be a combination of uh, potentially some mechanical energy. Uh, so the kinetic and uh, potential energy at the end uh, plus uh, any heat generated. Uh, and so this equation is, I guess, the most generally useful, um, or maybe not useful, but it's the most generally true, uh, because it accounts for the possibility of a non-conservative force generating some heat. Um, and if, if there's no non-conservative forces, then your heat is zero. Uh, and this also accounts for the possibility of there being some external force doing work. If there's no external force, this just goes to zero. But using like this whole thing every single time uh, is not is not helpful in a lot of our problem solving situations we're going to be able to do this uh, and then if you have a situation where that doesn't apply then we need to think about what else is going on it's not really you should memorize these equations like they should they should make sense uh, the the reasoning we went through when we said hey if this is true then this has got to be the equation if this is going on this has got to be the equation uh, that should uh, at least by the end of the unit, intuitively makes sense to you. You should be able to figure these equations out on the fly. They're not something you should memorize.